Welcome everyone. Welcome to this video on the 2022 astrology and I'm going to title it Believe in Yourself, right? <laughs> uh, not the authorities, not the fact checkers, not what you used to believe in the false paradigm. No, yourself, yourself. And I'm going to explain. You're going to understand by the time this is finished why I'm saying it that way, okay? Um, very quickly, the themes for this year, I'd say, you know, changing values, self-sufficiency, self-empowerment, non-compliance, how about that, resourcefulness, simplicity, financial fitness, agility, awakening, ascending, separating, idealism versus realism, practicality versus impracticality. And by the way, just as a side note, although I don't get into, you know, Chinese astrology, I thought it was interesting that this is the year of the water tiger. And um, water has a lot to do with self-esteem. Tiger is about exercising evils. Yeah, maybe demons. And I think as we get into, you know, looking at the nodes, which I find so important um, in 2022, really over the next year and a half, uh, we're looking at, you know, the nodes being in a placement that really kind of validates this. Yeah, we are going to be um, looking at self-esteem issues and releasing, purging, and letting go of uh, these darker aspects of ourselves, of society, the collective at large. Um, the good thing is that, you know, also according to Chinese astrology, you know, this is going to help give us some braveness and strength and courage, which I think is very much needed because, <laughs> you know, we do have some wild rides ahead of us this year. I don't think as wild as 2020, 2021, uh, but you, I think some heavy stuff. Okay, let me say that. Very heavy. And, you know, if you look at the numerology uh, for 2022, well, that breaks down to a number six, right? Two plus zero plus two plus two is six. And so the number six has to do with accepting and assuming responsibilities and putting the work in on the day to day. OK, last year, by the way, 2021 broke down to a number five year. OK, and number five is a lot about uh, change, conflict, competition, readjustment and so we're going from a year five to a year six and what does this mean well now is the time for us to acclimate those changes into everyday life you know bring it down to the brass tacks of things and you know put effort into meaningful goals and what we really value and what really returns value on the day-to-day -day. so that is just in a nutshell, but we're going to go much deeper. I hope that you're going to get your coffee or your hot tea or whatever makes you happy or just, you know, put this on um, your watch later playlist, okay, so that you can listen to it while you're working or doing something productive because it is long, it's thorough, but I think it's well worth a listen to. Um, I will get into covering just the basic forecasts and predictions for, you know, the main areas of life, love and romance career and money and then the world at large and but some of you again if you've got the attention span to sit and watch um all the way through i think you're gonna enjoy it because i will be adding um a lot of visuals in here um so hopefully it won't be too dull to just sit and watch me talking this whole time right <laughs> um in addition to covering the forecasts and pre predictions i am also going to cover key transits for this year important dates if you stick with me to the end I'll have a spiritual homework assignment so that hopefully we can make the most out of the energies this year. All right, one more thing before we get into this video. I want to say that I will be putting out um, a select number of astro tarot readings by zodiac sign upon request. How will you be able to request this? Well, you got to hit that subscribe button and make sure you've activated the bell for notifications, right? And go on to my community page where you can, you know, put a request on there. I, I, by the way, ask questions like that on my community page. And if you're subscribed and you're signed up for all my notifications, then, you know, you would have gotten the notification that I'm wanting to know if you want, you know, what sign you want me to do, okay? If your sign is not requested, then I'm not going to do it because it's just the nature of YouTube these days. In years past, I would have done them all, no question. But YouTube, as we all know, is a different platform than it was 
three, four years ago when I started this channel. So I will only do the signs if they are requested. If there's no demand for it, I'm not, I'm not going to do the work because it is a lot of work for me. Also, I am going to be doing annual readings for clients privately if you are interested and I'm working on a special for that where you get 60 minutes for a hundred dollars. But of course, I'll talk more about that later. So let's get into talking about the forecasts up ahead and the predictions that I'm going to make. Okay, very generally speaking, in terms of love and relationships, I think the overall energy of this year, particularly the first half of this year, there's going to be a lot more um, compassion and caring because of Jupiter in Pisces. And, you know, all of this being emotionally and physically disconnected from people because of you know, the Rona, <laughs> uh, I think people are ready to return to it. In fact, I was just on Twitter yesterday and I saw that some of the protests being done um, are public kissing. Oh, yes. I think that people, you know, are, are tired of us losing our humanity. And with Jupiter and Pisces, it's like, damn it, let's get back to the love, which is absolutely, I think, a beautiful thing. So not only are we going to see more physical touch, um, but I think more demonstrated empathy towards other people, deeper connections. Okay. I mean, I'm even seeing this um, within the community, you know, of the uh, vaxxers, non-vaxxers, or the, the non-maskers and the maskers. Um, where I, I am seeing more demonstrated, um, here's my cat, more demonstrated compassion, you know, um, feeling bad for um, people who have gone through the, the um, you know, and have suffered some injuries and really feeling bad, even though, you know, yeah, there are a lot of people that can say, well, I told you so. They're still like, oh my God, you know, this hurts to watch these people going through that. And so there is a softening, I think, of people's emotions. Um, and even, yeah, the, ma the non-maskers see, you know, people layering up, even their kids, still this, this going on. And, you know, and, and rather than getting angry, they're like, oh my God, how sad, you know, to grow up in a world like this. And the psychological, you know what I'm saying? And so even where there are differences, we are seeing demonstrated empathy um, and a deep and connection to humanity at large. I think it's a beautiful thing. I'm already feeling it in December. I hope you are too. Um, this Jupiter and Pisces energy as well is bringing us into more of a spiritual awakening where we are aspiring to the higher ideals of unifying over the highest good, um, which is what? Love and freedom for humanity. So man, all my Pisces right now is getting triggered just talking about it. I love it. Okay. So yeah, this is about getting into more of the 5D, the love, right? Over fear, which a lot of humanity has been in with the 3D, okay? We're looking at the bigger picture. We're looking at the higher truth of um, things and ideals and, and connecting the dots, you know? Now, yes, granted, there's free will here. So like I heard one astrologer on here say that the stars may impel but not compel. And I think that's you know what, we've got to keep in mind that yes, the energy is really encouraging a lot of uh, these Piscean um, qualities, positive qualities. Well, there could also be shadow as well. You know, we got to keep that in mind and there's free will. So what a lot of people could do on the shadow side of this energy is just totally Neptune out, like, you know, bury their head in the sand or get into escapism through drugs, alcohol, whatever. And so we could, even with these lovely energies, continue to see a divide. Um, within family, friends, over, you know, the awakened and those who wish to remain in the false paradigm, those who want to ascend to the 5D and those who wish to remain in the 3D. And, you know, people who want their freedom at any cost and those who are willing to trade their, their comfort and their sense of security, as false as it may be, um, for their freedom, okay? And so I want to say, you know, for those of you, I think most people watching me are among the awakened crowd, right? Because that's where I am and that's what I speak to. And a lot of those people who don't resonate with that, they don't watch my channel. They're not going to like and subscribe, right? So, you know, if you're watching me, chances are you and I are on the same page in this respect. And I want to encourage you that if you are dealing with people now and well into 2022 who, you know, aren't awakened um, and don't want to be, um, you know, don't beat yourself up over it. A lot of us have tried to awaken these people, right? we've been ridiculed, mocked, um, isolated, you know, alienated, this kind of thing, black sheep in families, right? I want to encourage you not to be so hard on yourself. 
because you know i've just come to the conclusion that um you know we all we can do is our best and sometimes that's not good enough right um some of these people they have vested interests in holding on to the false paradigm um you know maybe they work for big pharma maybe they work for um, these large corporations and they've they've got too much vested interest in in continuing to follow the program um there's also maybe even guilt. Maybe they know some things and they've participated in some things that, that they don't want to answer to. And so now it's just like, I know I'm wrong, but I'm covering up type of thing. There's also, of course, the issue, like I said, of escapism earlier where they can't handle the truth, right? Um, because, right, if I, if I acknowledge the truth of the matter, then, wow, this is going to really open up Pandora's box where I have to... Um, I have to ask myself, man, how did I let myself get deceived? And what else have I been deceived on? And, you know, maybe feeling the responsibility of, wow, you know, I'm going to have to do better. I'm not, I'm going to have to stop relying on other people to do the thinking for me um, and to tell me what to believe and not be so naive. You know, a lot of people do not want responsibility, believe it or not. They don't. So, um, yes, I think that we need to continue working on bridging uh, the gap between differences. And I think that uh, many of us will, particularly with this Jupiter um, and Pisces energy the first half of the year, um, ho hopefully helping people who are suffering with cognitive dissonance or Stockholm syndrome, help them to, you know, find, you know, get unified on the truth of the matter and the ideals and what's real. Okay, North Node and Taurus, all right. Um, and yeah, maybe maybe let these people know, it's okay to change your mind when you get new information and it's, it's okay. Um, but again, people who are, you know, dealing with personal pride um, and, and not the healthy kind, right? Um, prideful people, huh? like the scripture said, pride comes before a fall, right? Those types where they can't admit they've been wrong or that they've been deceived. Um, you know, some of us, if compassion doesn't work, well, we might have to just like let people go their own way and, and choose their own path. But yeah, I do think that some people are going to be working through um, issues of illusion and delusion um, this year, particularly the first half. Some of them, maybe not on either end of the spectrum, but somewhere in the center where it's like, okay, I, I something's not right here and, and still in some bit of a Neptunian fog of how did I let this happen and needing to work through and process through in the first half of the year. Um, maybe, maybe, right, just an idea, personal sharing moment here when I, when I had personally been deceived very badly, I had to come to a point in my own personal healing where I asked myself, how did I let this happen? And I think this is what's going to happen for a lot of people the first half of this year. By the way, the answer to that in my situation was, well, it's because I wanted to believe the lies. It was just easier for me. Um, the truth is really hard. The truth involves me being responsible, right? Stepping up, in this case, being responsible for uh, my own healthcare decisions, not being intellectually lazy, doing the research, hearing all sides out, making my mind up for myself, not letting other people decide for me and tell me what to believe, right? Responsibility, like I talked about um, before. I think as much as we are able to keep the lines of communication open uh, with the family and friends of us of ours who we don't agree with, um, I think we should. It's going to be very important to use this compassion and energy towards those ends to bridge the gap because uh, there will be things going on economically, which I'm going to talk about next, um, where the divide is likely going to get even farther and farther away. Um, and we, we need to be able to network and help one another. That's going to be mutually beneficial, particularly with the economic challenges coming up this year. Um, and, you know, just as a side note, it's come to my realization that those of us who are awakened and are very angry at the people who didn't listen, who mocked us, ridiculed, alienated us, and are in for a rude awakening, okay, if they haven't figured it out yet, <laughs> this next year, 2020, will help them, right, unless they're totally Neptuning out, all right, but anyway, the, the just again, on the compassionate note, I've come to this realization that a lot of people who are, have been very um, blindly pro-vax, um, many of them have, in all fairness, been insulated from the truth. Um, 
with their online connections. They've been kept in the dark through algorithms, search engines. Uh, those of us who have been awake and like I I started waking up in the early 90s, okay? Like I've been in this, I'm an Aquarian, so of course, you know, I'm going to be into this stuff my whole life, you know? But as the algorithms and the search engines and all of that have been making it harder and harder on people to access the truth. Well, you know, I kind of got a head start on this stuff and I got plugged in with the right people and, you know, I've been following them or, you know, if they got taken down or demonetized, I was on their newsletter, emailing list, whatever. So I've been in the know and the know and the know. Many of you are the same. Um, but for people who, you know, showed up to the party late, um, it, it's harder. Like it's, it's harder to get the truth now than ever before. Like in the nineties, so easy when the internet was the wild, wild west, you know? So let's, um, I don't know, maybe a bit, be a little merciful, right? A little merciful on some of these people. You don't know what's going on with them. Maybe a lot of Americans, I will say this, uh, living hand to mouth, paycheck to paycheck. And by the time they get done working uh, a long, grueling week just to survive, they come home, they're tired. I know I'm making up maybe excuses for some of y'all. Uh, we'll blame it on my Venus and Pisces. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but yeah, um, I do think also on the relationship front, um, just to wrap that segment up of the astrology for this year, uh, I think uh, on the relationship front, more, more along the lines of socializing friend groups, I think that we're going to see a lot more communities and co-ops uh, rise up that are based on the principles of freedom. Um, matter of fact, I'm looking at maybe forming one locally here, like a local meetup where I live, because I'm realizing the limits uh, to these online relationships. I mean, I've known about it, but I'm going to tell you as we get more and more into the year, I think you're going to see it become even more limiting with the online relationships. I'll talk about that in the segment about the world at large, politics, okay? Um, but very important to have these face-to-face real-time relationships in your local community so that we can strengthen one another and create like a hive where we are helping one another grow and we're reinforcing one another. Really super powerful stuff. And I do think it's going to happen this year. Um, there is, I think, also probably going to be a mass, continue to be a mass exodus from blue uh, cities and blue states. Uh, people wanting to go more out in urban, er, um, suburban, rural areas, getting away from urban areas, uh, more of a return to nature. People wanting to unplug from the matrix. Um, and I think that also with all this Pisces energy, we're going to see um, a greater awareness increase, not just spiritually, but in terms of alternative medicine, healing. Um, and I think some of this is probably going to be prompted by more whistleblowers coming out in the medical industry. And I'm talking real ones. I'm not talking fake, you know, whistleblowers that get fast-tracked to Congress like nobody else who are asking for more regulations. No. Yeah, that actually hurt the people, not the corporations and the government. Like we saw that in 2021. Beware of the faux whistleblowers, okay? I'm talking about real whistleblowers in the medical industry. We are going to see more of it. Of course, they're going to try to suppress it. But for those of us who are plugged in to the people, the right people in alternative media, we know, okay? And we'll see it. Um, finally, I do unfortunately believe that uh, we will see during this year some very surreal health issues coming up. And I'm going to get into, when I get into the important dates, I'll talk more about why, where that is coming from. In a nutshell, this has a lot to do with the South Node in Scorpio, which along with other energies to me indicate a calling, okay? And, and I don't mean to scare people, um, but... Y'all know by now, if you've been following my channel, I've been warning, I've been talking about this. It's really, all the signs are all over the, everywhere, online and offline, okay? And you don't need to be a psychic or an astrologer to figure this out, but yeah, there is astrology I'll talk about in a bit that really ties into it. All right, on the subject of career and money, well, this is a year I think we're going to see uh, more parallel economies emerge and, you know, parallel societies emerging as well. We started to see that last year with mandates, and that was causing a split. 
and a lot of societal divisions and upsets uh, between, you know, the vaxxed and the unvaxxed. And that's really affecting people, you know, in their local communities. And um, it's, but it depends on where you're at. You know, when I'm hearing like in some areas of California, you go into the big cities and it's, it's, you know, night and day when you compare that to some rural areas of California where you wouldn't even know that there's COVID going on, but you go into the city and the people are just absolutely paranoid um, wearing these masks and whatnot. And so um, this is how we're seeing more of a societal divide on local levels. Um, like I'm here in Texas and I'm shocked to see that, you know, how people are up in the Northeast, um, absolutely paranoid. And where I'm at in Texas, it's just like, we're back to normal. So it's kind of like, what's going on with y'all out there? Why are y'all still doing that? That's kind of weird Twilight Zone-ish stuff for me. <laughs> you know? And we're fine, you know, nobody in my family has gotten COVID or matter of fact, the only people that we know that have gotten COVID either had the vaccine or they had comorbidities. Anyway, um, you know, I think that also this, this split is happening obviously with the employers as you have a lot of employers who are mandating this and they're, they're now we're dealing with a great resignation. Well, there are a group of employers rising up um, saying, you know what, if you're not vaxxed, come work for us. And uh, by the way, there's a list of those employers floating around gab.com. So if you're interested in the list, go on there and do a search for it. If you want to work for somebody, like if you're in need of a job and you want to work for somebody who um, is not going to ask you uh, about your personal health care decisions, nor feels entitled to direct them, right? Real stuff, real problems. But yeah, it's just causing a divide. Um, also with travel, um, that's a whole nother thing. And we'll see where that advances over the year. I think that they are trying to get um, travel restrictions tied in. Obviously, a lot of us know about that. I think they will continue to push for it. But is humanity going to tolerate it? Or are they going to push back like we're seeing all over um, in Europe? I think in the UK or European countries, they've been protesting from what I heard, like 21 days straight, and the news media is not really covering it. And now Canada is out uh, protesting as well. And so humanity is really pushing back. And we're not even in to 2020, uh, 2022 yet, as I'm filming this in December 2021. So it's going to get even hotter, okay? I, I just think that as as the, the authorities increase, uh, the humanity is going to increase their pushback even further. Um, be aware over the next year of um, staged and artificially orchestrated events such as mass illegal migration, which they're going to blame on COVID, they're going to blame on climate change, anything but the reality of it, which is, you know, these countries, the people of these countries are being encouraged to come over, they're being incentivized. But border is basically wide open, right? Act like that's, that has nothing to do with it, right? No, it's on COVID and climate change, according to these folks. Um, and all of this is being used to justify um, a taxpayer-subsidized slave class of new Americans. Yes, you heard me right. Taxpayer-subsidized slave class of new Americans. That's why they want those people over here. That's why they're encouraging it. It is called cheap labor. And anybody who tells you otherwise is lying. Lying, okay? Now, sorry, I'm like really hot about that because I'm in Texas and we get a lot of that over here. Also, another thing staged is uh, the food and fuel shortages. I was warning people last year and even in 2020, watch out for these you know shortages you need to get into stockpiling um and it's not necessarily that there's going to be a famine or a drought or blah 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 blah, blah. There, there's plenty of food okay the problem is the people who are controlling uh supply chain um they are they are using covid yet again how clever interesting covid is being used for so many things um you know to basically manipulate people and garner more power through fear, through
through higher prices. And this is arguably economic warfare. All in the name of cyber attacks or, you know, stopping the spread for your protection, right? The economic changes and reforms that we're likely to see this year, well, we've been hearing rumors of the, the World Economic Forum and the Great Reset. And, you know, some of you who maybe have been told, oh, those are conspiracy theor theories and, you know, baseless and blah, blah, blah. Well, maybe you should go to the source and read for yourself what they want to do. And then look at the facts of what they've actually done. Very concerning stuff. We are coming into this year with inflation, um, interest rates going higher, Fed trying to roll out the digital dollar. Why? Because they want to move us into a cashless society. A global currency, ultimately, is their goal. And anyone who's studied crypto knows it is the future. There's really no way around it, okay? The idea that we're just going to keep on this dollar, fiat, paper, right, um, is, is fantasy land. Uh, doing the research, you will understand that the future is digital currency. Um, the question is, who's going to control that future? And if you look at China as a template, you, you can really see what the globalist plan is, that they want to be in charge. And China really shows us how. Um, they're trying to basically uh, lay the groundwork, not just China, but in the United States as well, lay groundwork for a social credit system where, yes, these vaccine um, certification cards and these travel permits and whatnot um, are all tied into the social credit system. And, right, if you look at what's going on, as I said before, in China, as an example, you see um, we're coming into a time where governments ultimately what they want to do with this this currency is make it programmable so that you can be told oh here's some money here um for a limited time we give you this money to go make purchases over there or they can freeze that money if you don't behave right everything's behavioral where you're being incentivized with your behavior to buy certain things or not to have the right to buy at all they want to control the currency digitally, just as it is done in China. Notice that even this year of 2021, as I'm filming this, we've already been seeing people like Hillary Clinton, Elizabeth Warren, come out against crypto, um, namely Bitcoin. They're trying to control it. They are trying to impose programs, again, for your protection, for your safety, which, my God, my, my God if you just, if you hear them say that, <laughs> Red flag. Anytime you hear a politician, a political leader tell you that something is being done for your protection or your for, sa for your safety, grab a gun. <laughs> Red flag. Okay. I'm not, I'm being facetious here, but you, you follow what I'm saying. Um, expect that over the next year, 2022, they are going to be relentless. They are going to be relentless in trying to get control over cryptocurrency. And remember, the devil never sleeps, okay? Remember, this is Elizabeth Warren and Hillary Clinton. They, they are part of the establishment. They are part of the never waste a good crisis crowd, right? We heard Hillary Clinton say that. We heard Obama say that. Rahm Emanuel say that. Uh, never waste a good crisis. And what is that about? That is about using crises to, as an opportunity to do things that they otherwise would not be able to do, right? Like tell you to stay home and that you can't travel freely and that you don't have a right to bodily autonomy. Well, they're going to try that trick again uh, with crypto. Please, people, do not fall for it, okay? And by the way, that trick will be in the name of protecting you from cyber attacks, hacking, uh, funding of terrorist organizations, uh, money laundering, they're going to pull out all the stops as to why you need to regulate yourself out of having the right to bank, to self-bank, and cut the bankers out of the system. They don't want it. 
All right, now with the job market, I think that we're gonna to continue to see uh, more vacancies from the mandate, and we're gonna to continue to see the media, you know, manipulate those numbers, play with them, right? They're already in the news talking about how there's so much job growth. Well, hold up, wait a second. How did we get to all this job growth? Is it because a bunch of people walk, walked off their job and left a lot of vacancies? Is that really the reason that we want growth? Is that anything to get excited about? But there's a lot of, you know, twisting of the story, so. I think over this year, we're going to see more work from home opportunities, not due to COVID though, but due to economic pressures. And what I'm hearing is a lot, a lot of employers are now coming to a realization, particularly with the economic pressures, that it helps them to kind of uh, trim down their overhead, their expenses, when they don't have to supply, you know, uh, you know, office space and all of these trappings that go into that. And so, we will continue to see more work from home opportunities. I think also that this could be the beginning of a property crisis. Perhaps a foreclosure crisis is going to begin this year and it would be stemming from, you know, what happened in 2022. It's a domino effect. And I remember back in 20, I'm sorry, 2020, uh, I remember watching a lot of people in the real estate community say that, you know, this, mortgage moratorium and the um, rent moratorium was going, the effects would not be seen until maybe 2023, 2024. You would start seeing it in 2022, but it would be full blown by 2023, 2024. Let me say, you know, if you are wanting to buy a house, I don't think this is just yet the, the right time to do it. Um, I would think the best deals will be had in 2023, 2024, uh, but you will start to see the domino effect finally hit um, from what went down in 2020. And um, also, I think that as people are uh, losing homes or trying to regain footing with new housing, uh, it is going to become more obvious and apparent just how pervasive the BlackRock big inv investment bankers who have bought up during this crisis conveniently never let a good crisis go to waste, right? The people who profited from these moratoriums um, and they went in and they bought up neighborhoods worth of um, properties not to sell back to individuals but to rent them to turn us into a renter nation. Well, um, we're going to see how far reaching that is starting this year. Finally, I do think that there's going to be tightened regulations and legislation on crypto. Um, and I will probably put out a video around the end of December, early January, when we're in Capricorn season. I'm going to talk more about this Um because somebody of you are requested that I, you know, discuss Bitcoin and crypto for 2022. And I think it's a great topic. It's a hot topic idea, particularly if you tie it into the astrology. Um, so I will talk more about that. Make sure that you're subscribed. You've um, hit the notifications button, all the notifications, if you want to make sure you're notified when that video comes out. But yeah, I will say that the bankers, the globalist bankers, uh, they are losing control with, um, the crypto market they're trying to get control because um, they've bought into a lot of it. they've been pumping and dumping bitcoin um, along with other institutional investors aka whales there's been insider trading as we all know people in congress get richer significantly richer um you know from this uh, insider trading and so uh, what you're gonna see is as people are awakening to the need to become sovereign in their banking and the desire to be able to self-bank and cut these people out of the equation, well, you're going to see the authorities try to step in with a lot more regulations and laws in the name of protecting you yet again. All right, let's talk about the world at large. Generally speaking, you know, in terms of politics, uh, I think that we're gonna continue to see a lot of changes going on with communications and basically information being restricted. 
let's take, for example, these social media platforms, uh, Twitter, Facebook, are they fading out? I personally, you know, we'll see if there's any truth to this. I don't think that Meta it verse is on you know, going to be that big of a hit. Um, as many of you know, that's Zuckerberg's latest baby. Um, and from what I hear, it is a rebranding of Facebook after so much negative press over the last year. It's uh, kind of a boss move for him to do that. Nevertheless, I don't really think that it's, I, I think people, like I said, are gonna, a lot of people are just gonna unplug from the matrix, so to speak. And he's part of the matrix, if you ask me. Um, Twitter, as many of you know, has a new CEO who is on record stating that he just doesn't really think that, you know, the First Amendment is that important. So uh, if you thought Jack Dorsey was bad, buckle up, it's about to get worse. Um, so I think that because of these changes, um, we are going to see a rise in uncensored platforms like Gab, Getter, Rumble. Rumble is an alternative to YouTube, right? Um, and Getter, I think, is an alternative to like Twitter, and Gab is an alternative to Facebook, if I understand that correctly. So a lot of people who are very freedom-minded, like I said, more of this uh, segregation, self-segregating of, oh, you're not going to allow me to speak freely? Well, I'll go to my own prep platform where I can. And so you're going to see, and again, once those people leave, the people who remain on there are going to get into more of a Neptunian fog because there will be nobody challenging the official narrative. It's going to be right this echo chamber worse than ever. And so um, I think also that there, I'm hearing rumors that there are uh, people who are trying to break up these monopolies, states, um, countries who are filing lawsuits or taking action to basically um, break up these monopolies or at least weaken their power to censor uh, users from their geographic region. Uh, Florida being one of them with Ron DeSantis. Last I checked, he has, a, I think, some a lawsuit against Facebook, if I remember correctly. I'm not sure where it's at so far on that. But I think we will see more and more of this stuff of people pushing back against big tech and putting them in check. And ultimately, you know, just if, if legislation doesn't fix the problem, well, vote with your feet, vote with your dollars, you know, go, go where you can get the freedom. Don't comply with these restrictions that they're putting on people. So I think also we'll, we'll see more real uh, tech whistleblowers um, exposing the algorithms that are going on behind the scenes and the blacklisting and the shadow banning and all of that. Uh, on the reporting front, you know, with journalism, which we don't really, we don't have journalists in America really anymore. Um, that That's kind of been long dead. Um, what we have is a bunch of teleprompters re readers who are reading canned reports and just parroting the same talking points coming from a top up power structure. So, you know, will there be any more responsible reporting, you know? Well, unfortunately, I, I don't see this changing because in 2022, because the the vested interests are there. You can still, if you follow the money, the money is still there. A lot of these people are being on record, funded by Soros, funded by um, George Soros, that is, China, okay, um, progressive socialist interests. And um, people are just going to do what they're paid to do, you know. They're going to report what they're paid to report. Uh, but I do feel that there will be increasing scrutiny of this. And I think more and more people are going to become aware of how the media is just full of prostitutes. Okay. And so, but because of this situation remaining largely unchanged outside of people's growing awareness of it in 2022, I do think that we will continue to not hear much talk anymore of the common cold or flu. Notice that disappeared. In 2020, miraculously, there was no more common flu or cold, right? Weird stuff, if you ask me. Um, so look, these people are going to continue to lose viewers. Um, and and it's, it's not just, you know, left-leaning 
media it's even right we saw in 2021 this was happening with fox news because you people are starting to even awaken to the concept of controlled opposition people who are creating the illusion of choice when in reality all it is is to create infighting and factions so that we're fighting one another and we're divided because right our powers when we're united on what the truth love freedom all right but i do think also uh, during this time, um, yeah, people are, the awareness has already been going through the roof. The awareness has already been increasing in 2021. It's going to continue, in my opinion, to escalate, um, right? It started, you know, last year. We saw in 2020, we were told that burning down cities was mostly peaceful protesting, <laughs> you know? And then in the Rittenhouse case, we saw, you know, oh my God, so many lies, so many lies. And um, by the way, I think there's going to be a lawsuit over that. I do believe that uh, Kyle Rittenhouse's attorneys will be in 2022 filing a lawsuit for all the lies that were put out in the media um, in this last year of 2021. And my God, if, if you were keeping up with that case, it was just astounding. And again, it's another reason why people need to go to the source, right? Anybody who was watching the actual trial and compared it to what mainstream media was saying about it knew, knew, factually speaking, that they were lying through their teeth. But the people who just got spoon-fed information, right, because they're intellectually lazy or whatever their reason, they blindly trust, um, they got schnookered into this false all these lies and then started fighting the people who were watching the actual trial and were like no that's not the truth no that didn't happen no you were lied to right it's but it created this divide well i think some people woke up to it okay um but there will be a greater awakening. And this is just one example of how, you know, we will continue to get more of this awakening, right? Like uh, pro the Project Veritas raid where uh, privileged communication between client and an attorney was leaked to the New York Times while the New York Times is in the middle of a lawsuit with Project Veritas, okay? So this actually, from what I hear, scared the bejesus out of people in the media because they start thinking, hey, we don't like Project Veritas or we don't agree with them or they don't pay our bills. But uh, wait a second, you know, if this could be done to Project Veritas, then, you know, it could be done to anybody. And, and now you got a lot of people in the media who are now getting nervous about could they be next? Could they be raided and have their their phone taken and all their private emails and texts and whatnot handed over to some other rival media organization for publishing to the public? Nasty stuff, but raising awareness. And another thing that came out in 2021, just, just a sign of things to come. It's going to escalate. Russiagate, for how many years people were lied to about the whole Russia, Russia, Russia narrative. And it's, you know, going to come out again. Um, and it's coming out that people were lied to in 2019. And so as all these... Right, we're in the South Node. Let me get back to the astrology for those of you who maybe lost the astrology here. We've got the South Node in the in Scorpio, and this is about secrets, purging, toxins, darkness, hidden stuff, secrets. It's already starting. We're already coming into it, and it's just going to escalate. So um, I think that, by the way, this... Uh, next year is going to be you know a mixed bag i think there will be some justice that comes out of these legal situations that i outlined to you about you know rittenhouse uh, project veritas russiagate okay um but i don't know if it's going to be enough justice i mean frankly i'm waiting on nuremberg 2.0 trials okay i'm i'm waiting for it crimes against humanity nuremberg code from what i hear you they're not allowed, according to the Nuremberg Code, to mandate vaccines. So where's the trials? Bring them on, okay? But I don't know if it's gonna, I don't know if it's gonna escalate to that uh, in 2022. Unfortunately, um, I think that as the COVID nar narrative continues to weaken and lose credibility, um, we're gonna see more of the narrative shift into this whole climate 
change. We are already seeing that, and that's going to escalate as we get a deeper into the year. So whatever boogeyman, whether it's COVID or climate change, whatever boogeyman can induce fear into the population to gain compliance, blind submission, well, I think they'll do it. It's highly effective. And so no matter what the narrative, the end result is the same. When the end result is about you giving up your freedom, you know something's wrong. And with whatever comes down the pike in 2022, whatever boogeyman presents itself, you got to ask yourself, if I wasn't afraid, would I agree to do this? And if the answer is no, then your answer should be no. Thanks for watching part one of this two-part series. If you want to watch part two, it'll be here as soon as it's available. In the meantime, you can watch current videos from my astrology and spirituality playlist. And if you want to make sure that you're notified the next time I post to this channel, make sure you subscribe and hit the bell for notifications. Thanks for watching. Be blessed.